could this album actually be the hip hop album of the year? A lot of people are talking about that. A lot of people are throwing that statement out there. The question is, is that a fact? Well, let's find out. In this video, we're going to be reviewing the brand new album by NF titled The Search. My name is Buckeye. Thank you so much for tuning in. And let's get into it. All right, first off, thank you everybody for stopping by the video today. I appreciate it. If you go on to enjoy, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more like this, and of course, let me know your thoughts on this album in the comments down below. Is it a good one? Is it a bad one? I want to know your thoughts. So without any further delay, let's just get into it, man. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be transparent. Obviously, you see the NF hats, the, the bit of an NF shirt I have on right now. I'm a bit of an NF fan, and I have now been like that since 2016. I've loved NF. Everything is done. I'm a huge, huge fan of NF. So, obviously, I've got probably a little bit of bias there to kind of take into consideration, but I do kind of want to view this from just an overall music standpoint. How was the search? Well, first off, we have to talk about the time of the actual album itself. It is a long album. There are officially 20 tracks on the album, 18 songs, 20 tracks. He uses time in the number six and number 20 slots. Um, one of them is slightly shorter. The, the one in the 20th slot is 10 seconds shorter. He said on Twitter that the reasoning for that is for streaming and for radio purposes. Not really sure why it's on there twice, but that's why it is there. And then he also has an interlude that is uh, track number 11. So 18 songs, 20 tracks, it's a bit of a long one. I'm not going to lie. It's very, very long. But for me personally, I honestly don't mind that at all. And it doesn't really feel like it's that long. I will say it kind of feels like two full albums in of each other, which is kind of interesting. It reminds me a lot of when Drake dropped Scorpion, how there was a side A and a side B. This kind of reminds me like that because all the way up until the interlude, which like I said, is track 11, it feels like one album. And then after the interlude to the last track, track 20, it feels like a secondary album, which is very interesting to me. But like I said, it's not a bad thing. It doesn't make it feel like it's extremely long. It just feels like two parts of an album, which, hey, that may be what he was going for. And if so, cool, congrats, you did it. For me, it kind of allows for a bit of a break, right? So you're kind of going, 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 going. You hit interlude, you kind of get to relax and listen to him talk for a second. They're like, okay, now I'm on to the rest of the album. And then you finish off the last, what would be nine tracks after that point. Personally, I don't see any problem with this. I think it actually works really well and it is not really long winded. Uh, it doesn't really seem that long, even though it is a very long album, it doesn't really feel like that. And I think that's because of the kind of break that you get with the interlude at the medium portion of the album. Now let's talk briefly about some of the tracks itself. We'll just go from one to 20 basically here. Uh, first off, the title track of The Search is really, really good. And it is kind of a staple NF song. It's got that really cinematic sort of soundtrack and beats with some new changes that NF has been adding to his plethora with some different changes in his flow, some different beats and how he does things. The Search is traditional NF, but improved, I think is the best way to put it. Moving on to track number two with Leave Me Alone, this is a little bit of an extension of the search, and they're kind of, in terms of the music videos, they go together really, really well. In fact, I think after the search ends, you pretty much pick right off where that ends with Leave Me Alone. So they're kind of basically the same song in that light, uh, but Leave Me Alone, once again, kind of takes sort of that cinematic approach, but kind of pushes into that new territory a little bit more on Leave Me Alone, with some more flows, he actually finally goes into like supersonic speed, not actually supersonic, but he goes into really fast speed rap, which he hasn't really done much of ever before. He's done some fast on like intro from his mansion project, but this is like the fastest I think he's done on any of his projects, starting off here with Leave Me Alone. So Leave Me Alone is traditional NF, but once again, improved even more and trying some new things. Now, Change is one of my favorite tracks because of the hook. This is so interesting. And when I first heard it, I was very curious because I've never really heard anything like this from NF before. The hook is very unique, something I've never really heard. If you guys haven't checked it out, please check it out. It's a really, really good song. My Stress, the next track, number four, is right now, Arguably my favorite track on the album. The hook itself is just phenomenal and the subject matter is really, really good. I can't get enough of the song. It's just really, really good. Next, we have Nate at number five. Nate is a very NF song, but I will say I get some extreme hops and vibes when listening to this song, especially in the first verse. 
listen to some Hobson Ill Mind and then listen to some of Nate and uh, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's really good though. It's him kind of introspective talking to his younger self and this was as a result of him having to check into therapy for about four days after I believe it was the first leg of the Perception album. It was a interesting song. Really, really interesting. It's a long one. It's five minutes and two seconds, but it is worth the listen. Absolutely. Next, we have the radio bop time. And honestly, he always is going to make some form of love or relationship song on the albums, which I appreciate and I welcome. They're always fantastic. And that's what time is. Time is definitely designed from the ground up for the radio. And I think it's going to do really well. It's already doing very well as it is. So, I mean, what can you say? It's a good song. Returns, I think, is where we really get a good glimpse into Nate's improvements as an artist. The flow that he uses, the multiple flows that he uses on Returns, is something that he has not done before. The lyricism on this is perhaps the strongest that he's ever done in a song. All in all, this song is really, really good. And also, it's kind of the center of attention right now because a lot of people think, including myself, that uh, he kind of takes some jabs at Eminem as a result of Eminem taking a jab at him in his song, The Ringer, back on his Kamikaze project that dropped last year. The Returns, if you're going to listen to a song from the album, check out Returns. When I Grow Up is another one of the songs that has absolutely exploded, and I don't necessarily think that he thought this one would ex- would explode, but When I Grow Up has absolutely gone crazy on YouTube, and it's a phenomenal song. The uh, The song definitely seems to be one of those uh, tour songs, the one that the crowd is just going to go crazy to, and I hope that I can go so I can experience this myself, but we shall see. Only is the next song, and in fact, the only song with a feature on this album. I was kind of expecting him to have a few more features than usual on this album, and in fact, he's actually had less features on this album than he's done before, which is crazy to me. So, hey, only feature, phenomenal song. Uh, Check it out. It's really good. Sasha Sloan does a phenomenal job with the hook on here, and I didn't realize, but basically the feature is just taken from Sasha Sloan's song, The Only, and just uh, done some vocal changes to it and then put into this one. So it's kind of interesting. It's, It's a bit of a feature, also not a feature, is what it is. Let Me Go is a really, really good song. Once again, where NF is kind of talking to some of his personal problems that he's trying to say, let me go, let me go from these from these problems, from these anxieties. It's, it's just a really, really good song. Check it out. Interlude provides a really good perspective on where NF's headspace has been over the last year and a half, almost two years now since he dropped Perception. You'd think that with somebody blowing up as much as they did with Perception that they would deal with it really, really well and have a good time But in fact, the opposite has happened for NF, and he really goes into detail with that in the interlude. It's very interesting. Check it out. Hate Myself, as the title suggests, is a very deep song. It talks about how NF has a lot of problems with himself, and like the title suggests, hates himself. And he said actually on his Instagram Live shortly after the album dropped that this was one of, if not the most important song that he wrote for the album for himself and his personal life. It was a really big help for him. And uh, looking at it now, because he's not in that same place anymore, it's very good for him to look back on and say, wow, that's where I was at. I'm glad that I'm not there anymore. Hate myself. The hook is beautiful. It's weird if you're listening to it with other people because they're like, wow, that's kind of weird. He's talking about how he hates himself. But if you think about it and you listen to the lyrics and you listen to how beautiful it is, it's a really, it's, it's a beautiful song. On the surface, it seems odd, but it's a really, really great song. I Miss the Days is perhaps the most unique song in this album that I love so much. NF obviously is no stranger to having choirs and cinematic sounds and stuff like that in his songs, especially in like the intros and the outro song. But this time he has like a full on like gospel choir just singing through. And it honestly reminds me of, I believe, the song Hallelujah from Logic's Everybody album. I think that's the one. I could be wrong, but it's one of the songs in the album. The whole album kind of has a lot of that feel. But the the orchestral choir that we get in this song is absolutely amazing. I love it so much. Check this song out. It is perhaps the most unique song in the album for him specifically that he's never really done before. I love it. It's a really great. No excuses. The beat on this song is amazing. Literally, I listened to the song, honestly, only for the beat. I mean, I love the lyrics and everything. He has some some fun flows on this one. But the beat and the instrumental, he's got this little thing where like every two sets, or I don't even know how to, how to describe this, but there's a little sound that's like, eh, 
and it sounds super simple, but it sounds so good. Maybe I'll put a clip up here so you can kind of get a listen for what I'm talking about. No excuses. I, I, I got no ex then we have Like This, and personally, I think that Like This is the most underrated song on the album for what it is. Like This, nobody really talks about that song being their favorite, but let me tell you right now, that song is beautiful. It is atmospheric. It's true, it's retrospective, the lyrics are fantastic, and the sound overall is just gorgeous. And like I said, it doesn't get a lot of love from everybody else. Maybe they like it, but they're just not saying it's their favorite. Like I said before, I mean, My Stress is probably my favorite. Like This is really up there. I love this song. Next, we have Options, which is basically the last sort of hype beast song that he has on the album. And this is actually the song that we probably got the most of before it actually released. There were two full snippets that Nate put out there for this song, and you got a really good glimpse into what the song was going to be like, and it's a great freaking song. It's hype. It goes hard. The lyrics are fun. It kind of reminds me of a Destiny from the Perception album because of how the, the hook kind of works and the way the lyrics are, and I don't know, it's a fun song. Check it out. Next, we have Why. If you guys are familiar at all with NF, you already know of Why. It's been out for over a year now. It's a great song. It's a really, really great song. Next, we have Thinking. Thinking is another one of those uh, very underrated songs. It's, it's not as powerful as everything else. It's just kind of calm, and it makes you think, but it's a really well-done song, and I really can't complain about it too much. But if I had to say, it's probably one of the more forgettable songs in the album. It's not forgettable, but if I had to say one of the songs like that, I would say that Thinking is definitely lower on the list. And then we have Trauma. Now, Trauma is the only song in the album that is exclusively singing from start to finish. It is Nate's perhaps favorite song, he said, and also the one he's most scared about releasing as, you know, it's only singing. And he's done only singing before, obviously, with If You Want Love from Perception, but this one is a little bit different. It's very calm, somber, and thoughtful. And it may not be for everybody. I love it a lot. I think it's beautiful, but uh, it's definitely not going to appeal to everybody. I will say that much. And then, of course, like I said, we have time coming in to round it out at number 20, but there's basically nothing different with that song at all. Listen, at the end of the day, this album to me is absolutely phenomenal. And I've been telling people online and in person that it is truly a masterpiece. Now, like I said at the beginning of this, I am a massive NF fan, so there's a little bit of bias that's going to come through with this, so be aware of that, but I truly believe that this is a 10 out of 10 album. I have zero complaints with this album. Every song is really, really well done. It's beautiful. It's a fantastic album from start to finish. I have listened to this album since Friday when it came out, July 26th at 12 a.m. Eastern. I've listened to this album probably 50 plus times completely through every single song, and then I've also listened to a numerous amount of those songs uh, by themselves even more times. So I am completely engrossed into this album. I've already bought the vinyl, and I don't even have a record player. So I think you understand that I love this album so, so much. I think it is Nate's best album. If I had to rate the albums, I would say that it goes The Search, Perception, uh, Therapy Session, and Mansion. I love this album. What can I say? It is absolutely fantastic. I don't want to dwell too much on that. I've already gone into it. So let me know what you guys saw on the album down in the comments down below. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did you love it as much as I did? I want to hear all of your thoughts. Truly, I would like to have a conversation with you all down in the comments. So let me know what you thought. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I'm telling you, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, all the good stuff. You know what I'm saying? Hit that bell everything you got to do. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.